Now I'm working on these at the moment, but you know sometimes it's one step forward and two steps back. So this has been one of those weeks. Right, before I can get started on cutting dovetails in the real parts, I gotta make sure I get a decent test piece. This was just my dovetail cutter test, that's just a random size. What I need is an accurate dimension on these things. I'm gonna look for that dimension. Okay, I don't have a good feel for slotting tool parts at this stage. It's a tough cutter though. I don't think it's been damaged. I think there's a slight chamfer that's from manufacturer on the end of there. But I definitely need to do something different to make those slots. Okay, so what did that tell me? Well, I still don't have a decent feel for feeds and speeds while slotting slotting straight through was just a chattering mess. I tried setting up an adaptive toolpath in FreeCAD and as you can see the default adaptive toolpath spirals in from the top and then works its way out but it stops at the edge of the piece geometry, the part geometry. That didn't look that great. It took me a while to work out how to get the thing to start off the work if you've got an open pocket which is basically what that is because I've got an open side here and on the back. To make it enter off the work from the side you have to use this extensions tab. Enable the extensions. It finds the two faces automatically or it did for me. And then I just had to extend out the side here and I decided to go out 22 millimeters. And once I did that, it gave me a toolpath that looked much more sensible. When I first saw that toolpath, I thought it was kind of weird the way it sort of went wandering around at the end here. But it kind of makes sense. Clears out, goes back through, does the edges. Right, so that was my first challenge uh, mastered, how to get an adaptive clearing toolpath out of FreeCAD's path workbench. But now I'm going to switch over to the, to the dovetail cutter and try and get the right width. In case you didn't see it, this is a shop made cutter. I made a video on it. So if you look up here in the right, there should be a link to that video. Oops, that's not good. Take that off while machining. Hey, last week I did a live stream interview with Danish CNC shop owner extraordinaire, uh, Nikolai Owens, and I don't think YouTube actually offers live streams to most normal viewers. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description of this video if you wanna watch that. I think I've got a toolpath that's going to work, so let's see. So I've measured this block which uh, Luke pre-milled for me. It's within one one hundredth of a millimeter on all four corners to its nominal, so it's nice and parallel. Let's just check the tram before we start. That doesn't look so good left to right. Okay, so I'm out of tram high this way. So I'll take it all apart and let's try checking that. Okay, so the table's within two one hundredths over a much wider distance than I'm cutting. Maybe I had a bit of swarf or something under that vise. Let me check. Okay, let's give this a good rub down. Make sure there are no burrs on it. There's a high spot there. I wonder what that was. Feels like there's nothing down that end. Throw a bit of whey oil on it so that it doesn't corrode the table.
I wonder if it's just a shit voice. Okay, the voice doesn't look too bad either. At least the bass casting looks, looks reasonably parallel with a, maybe a hundredth. So this vice is not very repeatable. The position is very dependent on how I tap it in. It's quite even side to side. But I do lose about four one hundredths front to back. Looks like that's as good as I'm going to get it with this vice. How are we doing here? This is still a bit tight, which is expected. One thing I'm worried about, I'm seeing that the dovetail angle looks like it's a little bit too steep. It's been pointed out to me by a couple of viewers that if I want to cut an exact 60 degree dovetail with a 60 degree insert, that cutting edge needs to be on the center line. I was intending to move the cutting edge forward a little bit, just to ensure that I had some back clearance here. To be honest, I screwed up and I was only intending to have the cutting edge of the insert here and I obviously forgot the thickness. This distance between the center line and the cutting edge is currently 4.4 millimeters and therefore I can't expect this cutter to cut a 60 degree dovetail. Now that's a bit uh, annoying that I made that mistake, but hopefully I can fix it and that I just line it back up in the, in the indexing head, cut this down to put the insert on center line. Given that these TCMT inserts have t uh, seven degrees of back clearance, so I'm reasonably confident that because this is a 35 millimeter diameter cutter, that will be enough clearance to still get a decent cutting edge. Now what I am quite happy to see is that these inserts appear to be in pretty good condition after that first dovetail was cut, plus a few practice cuts. Not seeing any bad chip out or excessive wear or anything, which is good. Mail time. This is the replacement for the one which I murdered from my mate the other day. I got it from Bayer Tools in Germany. I hope that's decent. And I also got a set for myself because I could kill my own next time. What's this one? Didn't order anything, not sure what to expect. Ah, it comes from Willem. Uh-oh. It looks like Willem's sent me an engagement ring. Oh man, it's gonna be hard to explain this to Mrs. Rotary. <laughs> Oh, fuel. These are the three AMF Buller clamps that I already owned, and this one was already given to me by Willem. This is the fourth one to finish the set. Thanks very much. These hold down clamps are brilliant. See, they're slightly angled in all directions, and as you clamp the thing down, it just pulls your part down onto the table, holds it really nice and securely. Thanks a lot for that, Willem, and especially very cute uh, box that you put it in. I must say I'm very impressed by the quality of your printer too. That's very nice. <laughs> Look, with the asymmetric slots in it, so it only fits one way. Ah, good. My two orange shower curtains. I wonder what that random looking bow is about. Right, so I'm kind of sick of when I'm painting, all the oversprays going in my bins, and some of them have got quite nice stuff in them, and I'm kind of sick of the overspray on it, so... Well, I like the look of the bins better, but at least this way, stuff should stay cleaner, huh? Oh, and speaking of orange, the tulips are now in pretty much full bloom. Mrs. Rotary SMP forbids lawn mowing until the tulip bloom's finished. But anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, the dovetail cutter. i get this set back up on my indexer.
Okay, well that's me back in business, hopefully with correct geometry. So why do I have a bunch of boxes here? Well, I'm having issues with the tool release. Okay. Hear that click? The machine's not reacting to the tool release button properly. And now let's try a speed change. Yeah, that's not correct. It's not completing the change either. Unfortunately, over time, junk builds up around a stationary machine. This is all just scrap cast iron and scrap hard drives used for castings. I put on my steel caps for this bit. The disc brakes around the back here are also part of my cast iron collection. Right, let's take a look at the schematic, shall we? The hydraulic pump's driven by a three-phase motor, and that's controlled by the contactor 3K1, which is this one, and protected by the breaker 3Q1, which hasn't tripped. Then on the control side of things, Contactor 3K1 is controlled by 5K1 is the 24 volt relay which you get when you press the tool release button. We know that's working. Uh, there's a fuse oh, and another contact on that three phase circuit breaker 3Q1. Aha! Fuse 6F4, that shouldn't be down. Looks like I found an error in the schematics because 6F4 should only be the machine light whereas 6F3 should be controlling the 24 volt rail which I think is what went down. I wonder what caused it to trip. Anyway, let's try that again. Oh great, with that working again, the Mahu can go back into its corner and let's get on with it. Okay, time to check it again. What was our target width for the dovetail? 33.6. Okay. Four one hundredths over. Let's see what it feels like. So this is the one I just cut. Sure feels kind of loose. Yep, now that's definitely too loose. Doesn't clamp. Okay, let's just recheck those measurements. So it's a different caliper, but it's within a couple of hundreds. Now on wood, I'd say I'm probably within maybe two one hundredths, slightly large. So if the width isn't wrong, it's what about the depth? Eight point nine five deep. Nine point two three deep. That puts me over a quarter of a millimeter too deep. No wonder the dimensions are off. Chop that off and do another cut.
Okay, so let's try this out. Okay, the dovetail's still got a little bit of play in it. I could probably reduce that a wee bit more. Oh, that's nice though. Grips up nicely, clamps well. So after all that mucking around, at least I've got the dovetail dialed in. But it's not too late to actually move on to making the proper ones. So I'll leave you here. Thanks a lot for watching. Look forward to getting this job done in a future video. I'll leave a trailer link to my interview with Nikolai.